I was in a game with this guy, and at first it sounded pretty shit. We were playing 3.5 and had all deliberately chosen classes that wouldn't overshadow one another, but all had very specific roles to play in the party, so no one stepped on each other's toes. Then the GM announces his little brother will be joining the game, and he will be playing a wizard. We all came to the same conclusions. The GM will grant his brother concessions and preferential treatment, and since he'll be playing a wizard, the rest of us would be left by the wayside. Nothing could have been further from the truth. Enter Fabulous Bill. Fabulous Bill, enchanter and prognosticator extraordinaire, was essentially Kenneth Branagh in wizard form, entirely over the top and theatrical in every way. Thing was, he only had average charisma and about two ranks in perform, magic. So whilst he had a lot of enthusiasm, it wasn't backed up by anything coming close to talent. That never stopped him though. I think my favourite moment was when he needed to cause a distraction in the town square so some of the rest of us could sneak into the guard's evidence lockup. So he decided to put on a show. Said show fell flat on its face due to his aforementioned lack of talent until he started using actual magic to make his pet toad familiar cribbage. Cribbage. Cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> Cabbage. Cabbage the floor. Cribbage fly majestically around the square. He used prestidigitation to have some rather weak firework effect bursts around this very confused toad. <laughs> but his distraction worked until someone pointed out that he was using real magic. Q Bill being chased out of town by an angry mob demanding their coppers back in a carriage with his own face plastered over it. Oh God. <laughs> All right, I'm back with the cheapest scotch our fruity kiwi dollars can buy and a tale of why Bill isn't allowed in Parliament anymore. So fabulous Bill, enchanter and prognosticator extraordinaire was, as previously mentioned, an illusionist slash enchanter, which meant that he had disguised himself as a spell. Bill used disguise himself all the time. Often this would lead to terrible consequences as Bill's charisma was 9 and his buff skill was summerly god-awful. So we were in the middle of investigating where all the city tax revenue was being funnelled. The government was raking it hand over fist, but no one could say what it was being spent on. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, come on. like, come on, that's just day-to-day -day life. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, like, seriously. Which meant that we had to seek an audience with the treasurer. The treasurer was swamped by people seeking audiences because of the tax hikes. So there was a huge line stretching from outside the treasurer's office all the way through the parliament building and down the front steps. Bill took one look at this line and started racing to the front of it, annoying a great many people as he ran past. Once he got close to the front of the line, he carefully looked over the man next in line for the audience before scuttling over to an alcove and casting disguise self to make him look identical to the man. Then, with a shout of, Behold! Wonderment! Bill threw a pile of coloured sand into the air and caused a small explosion at the back of the room. In the commotion, he managed to sneak in behind the man he was now the exact double of. The treasurer's assistant did a double take when Bill approached his desk, but must have just assumed it was deja vu, because Bill was quickly ushered through to see the treasurer. Only problem was, the guy he was copying was in fact a pretty wealthy merchant and landowner. And now Bill had to fake like he knew what he was doing, with a charisma of 9 and a bluff of minus 3. <sighs> so he's just gone into the treasurer's office, having duplicated the last guy he went in. The treasurer is sitting behind the desk, writing in his huge green ledger which he quickly snaps shut as Bill slash wealthy merchant guy approaches. Ah, oh, Weatherby, I was talking to you a moment ago. Why have you returned? Yes, it is I. Weatherby. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Uh, what, what do you want? Bill wiggled his eyebrows conspiratorially. I want to know about uh, the taxes. The treasurer frowned. What taxes? The taxes. Where they go. What do you do with them? Bill was about as subtle as a half brick in a sock, as you can see. The treasurer was both surprised and annoyed. You know very well where they go. He patted the ledger. To the holdings. Ah, yes, the holdings. <laughs> <laughs> why, why does it always de devolve into porn acting? Like, that's what it always devolves into. Did someone order a pizza? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> why not deliver some back to the public? 
Afraid you'll slay the golden goose? <laughs> what? Oh, God. At this point, Bill attempted a sleight of hand to reveal a rubber goose prop he'd pre-hidden in his sleep. Why? What? For such an occasion? Well, Why the fuck would you need... Look, he's a wizard, okay? Maybe he wants to be a magician. <laughs> Unfortunately, he bungled the role quite badly and ended up drawing a colourful bunch of flowers before tripping on an armchair and falling into the bookcase. <laughs> nice. The treasurer looked at Bill with a barely concealed disdain. Please leave my office immediately. This sounds like Grand Wizard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bill had to think quickly, which was never a good thing. He let out a high-pitched screech of terror before pointing at a large floor-to-ceiling window behind the treasurer's desk. Oh my lord, my goodnessy Worthington, a dragon! That's the equivalent of, hey, look over there. Hey, look over there! <laughs> <laughs> or, what's that in your shirt? Like, <laughs> That's exactly what it is. What dragon? What are you talking about? Bill then cast Major Image, and since he was a pretty high-level caster, the dragon he illusioned up was fucking huge, and began flying around, roaring and belching fire. Get down, your treasure ship. <laughs> Bill tackled the treasure to the ground. I'll go tell the guards. Bill got up and attempted to sleight of hand again to pick up the green ledger. But the ledger was pretty big and the treasurer was looking directly at him. <laughs> so naturally, he failed by a wide margin. The DM ruled that Bill had just picked up the ledger without bothering with any ledger domain. The DM had ruled prior to this due to the player's somewhat excessive use of disguised self that if he was to try to imitate someone and then talk to a person who knew that someone well, they'd get to roll a sense motive every time Bill acted out of character for the person he was imitating. This of course happened almost all the time. So the treasure is on the floor and he sees Witherby or Bill picking up his ledger after having just tackled them to the floor, both way out of character. My God, Witherby, what are you doing? Who are you? Bill's illusion had fell revealing him in all his sequined and velvet-robed glory. Oh, God. <laughs> With a final yell of, Illusion away! <laughs> Quality. Bill cast a rather lacklustre dancing lights before sprinting out of the office. The treasurer was none too pleased. Guards, seize that man! He has the ledger! Now, it's important to note that at this point, none of the rest of us knew what had gone on in character. We were still waiting at the back of the line to see the treasure, so the first thing we saw was Bill bursting out of the parliament doors, pages of the ledger streaming out behind him, and sprinting down the steps towards us. <laughs> Flee, comrades! We've been rumbled! <laughs> Bill carried on down the street, pursued by three guards. Of course, no one else knew that we worked with Bill, so we all tried our best to act nonchalant. We finally got to see the treasurer sometime later, who, when we entered, was describing Bill to a charcoal sketch artist and demanding posters of him to be put up, banning him from the Parliament buildings for all time. And that's how Bill got banned from Parliament. <laughs> Not that bad, to be honest with you. I've heard worse. <laughs> like, you know, to be banned from a building. <laughs> like, he, he got what he needed. Apparently they were being embezzled in order to fund the construction of a giant blood fueled summoning circle which would encapsulate the city. Oh dear. Upon activation everyone in the city would be sacrificed and some kind of forgotten god would be resurrected. Why does it always come back to the doomsday cults? Yeah. It's always the doomsday cults yeah. throughout the New Year's. I have a feeling that the DM had watched Full Metal Alchemist recently when he thought that one up. Yeah it actually does that, come to think of it. Is that an anime? Yes, it's anime, Megan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> One final story about Fabulous Bill, which is more to illustrate the kind of mentality the player had about the character. So Bill, like most wizards, had a familiar. But a man like Bill could never settle for something banal and normal like a crow or a snake. He had to have something special. Bill's familiar was an extraordinarily fat toad named Cribbage, who assisted Bill in his magic performances. Cribbage assisted Bill by wearing a pair of incredibly cheap and poorly made wings made from goose feathers and paper mache. <laughs> <It's perfect. laughs> Bill would then cast Fly on Cribbage 
and he'd soar around the performance area, happy as a toad could be. I don't know if he was very happy. I don't know if he could be happy. I think he sounds like he's terrified. The problem with all of this, Cribbage became obsessed with learning to fly for real. Oh my God. It consumed him. He lived for those days when Bill would utter the words and make the gestures. And then Cribbage would aloft like the majestic buffo he was. And for a few minutes he would live his dream. But it always came to an end. And Cribbage often became withdrawn and sullen whenever a performance ended and he had to land again. Bill told us all this because obviously Cribbage couldn't. And we could all see it troubled him. He wanted desperately for his best friend to realise his dream. But he only had so many spell slots and the rest of the team needed his help too. So Cribbage suffered in silence, aside from the odd croak. Thus it was when we began a mighty quest to restore a fallen angel back to her rightful place at her god's side. We found her crumpled on the side of the road, bed raggled and desperate, her wings covered in mud. Apparently she had been cast down for questioning her god's judgement and burning an entire field of his faithful crops. She had been told that to restore her honour she needed to find some kind of lost MacGuffin, a holy orb I think which was rumoured to be hidden in a nearby labyrinth. Before she had a chance to investigate, however, bandits had set upon her and stolen her equipment and broken her wings. Naturally, being a generally good party, we decided we would help this angel in her quest. She led us to the labyrinth, an enormous 10 square mile maze built to test the convictions of the faithful of this particular religion. It was full of traps, monsters, illusions. Bill squealed with glee at the mention of these and other foul entrapments, but nonetheless, we plunged in. This labyrinth occupied us for the next eight months of real time. I don't know how long it was in game. We all leveled up at least twice. It was sort of revisiting the days of second edition when it was mostly dungeon crawling and it was rarely dull. The labyrinth itself was more than just a physical location. You see, it would warp and change in strange ways so we were constantly being confronted with new environments and locales. Huge caverns with glittering... S- stalactites. Stalactites? Yeah, stalactites. You know, like, Sta- you know like them pointy things in caves, stalactites and stalagmites. No. Yeah, like, you know, like spiky oh, things. Oh, them? Yeah. Oh, I just thought they were like rock icicles. Fuck off, Megan. <laughs> I did. Fuck off, Megan. <laughs> Forgotten and deserted cities full of nothing but shrieking ghosts. An entire ocean. Black as pitch so we couldn't see what was beneath. Oh, fuck, that would scare the shit out of me. Yeah, it wouldn't be for you. But we waded through it all. Defeated or ran away from every challenge. And finally, after what felt like years of trials and tribulations and toil, we got to the centre of the labyrinth. At the centre, on a simple sandstone plinth, stood what we had come to get. The Holy Orb, which looked like a miniature sun coated in fire and banishing shadows. We approached the plinth cautiously. None of us thought that after all we'd been through, that getting the orb itself would be as simple as reaching out and grabbing it. And we were right. As soon as we were all in the room, a booming voice echoed out. Ye who think thee worthy, take my final test. And just like that, Numerous Archons of various types sprang into existence and charged at us with a war cry. What a battle it was. We were all pretty powerful at that point, but we were still hard pressed to fight them all off. My monk leapt about the room, punching angels in the face left and right. The rogue faded into the background, her movements only evidenced by the deep stab wounds and cuts that appear on the angel's back. The fighter bellowed his own war cry and engaged the chief Archon in single combat, their blades blurring in an elaborate dance of steel and desperation. And Bill stood back from it all, exalting his allies to fight for their lives and for the honour of the angel, who had become a close friend over the years. He knew that his illusions wouldn't have much effect on divine creatures, so he drew upon what little he had in way of directly damaging spells. Fireballs, vitriolic spheres, magic missiles, He threw his entire arsenal at the host of angels arrayed against us. It was long, it was bloody, and the fighter was brought low by a lucky strike from the chief Archon, only saved by the healing touch of the angel we had committed to helping. But we saw it through, and the angels retreated back whence they came, 
All five of us approached the plinth, and the angel lofted the holy orb from its perch. This close we could see that it didn't just look like a miniature sun, it was a miniature sun. With all the destructive and creative power it implies, the angel was only protected by her divine nature. The rest of us would have surely been burned by the fire that cascaded constantly over the orb's surface. As she lifted the orb, the booming voice spoke again. Ye who are worthy shall be each blessed. Think carefully and choose wisely, then speak your wish. When it said wish, it meant it. The god whose angel we'd helped was literally offering us a free cast of witch each, and we weren't going to spend it rationally. The fighter spoke first, asking to be granted the strength and speed necessary to protect his friends from danger, and he was granted his wish. The rogue spoke second, asking for the ability to fade from view, even in plain sight, and she was granted her wish. I spoke third, asking for the wisdom to achieve a higher state of consciousness so that I could better hone my body and craft, and I was granted my wish. The angel spoke forth, asking to be restored to your rightful place at her god's side, and she was granted her wish. Bill spoke last, and looked to his best friend perched on his shoulder. Both of them were blackened, bloodied and tired, but Cribbage had never left him or failed to be true, even in the face of certain death. With tears of joy streaming through the soot on his face, Bill simply said, I wish for my best friend's dream to come true, and his wish was granted. So finishes the tale of Fabulous Bill, enchanter and prognosticator extraordinaire. His faithful companion Cribbage, who finally achieved his dream of soaring like an eagle on the thermals. The player never thought to ask for a stat bonus or extra spell slots or anything mechanical. He always knew what he would ask for if he could, because that's who he was. He was the best player I've known, and I miss him every day. Godspeed, David. Hope you have finally found peace. Unfortunately, the brother killed himself later that year. Apparently, he had pretty severe depression that none of us knew about. So obviously put an end to the character and to our D&D group for the foreseeable future. After the fact, I found out that this Bill character had actually also taken levels in Nightmare Spinner, which I can't help but think was a subtle indication that the player wasn't alright. I don't know if there was anything we could have done, but it really troubles me to think that there were signs that we just didn't catch. And for this being Suicide Awareness Day, look after your friends. And if you see somebody struggling, reach out for them. And just remember, it's okay not to be okay. And people will listen. And just remember, it's a permanent solution to a temporary problem.